Hello, hello guys. Welcome to my 6K weapon and spell damage heavy armor two-handed sword frost staff hybrid warden build. Yeah, this is a super sweet build. It's very tanky, it hits hard, and it has incredible ability to control. And uh, yeah, all my hybrids in the past, guys, have been medium armor. We've gone for that quicker, faster style dodgy gameplay. This is the first time I have done a hybrid for you guys that is a tanky armor spec. So check that build out, guys. Hello guys, and welcome to the build. So, let's begin. To start off, we are a Nord on this build, guys. Um, for a hybrid, I've always said that Dark Elf is usually the best choice. For this particular hybrid build, Nord is actually, I think, best in slot. Part of this build is that we are playing a tank hybrid, and uh, we do want to have a lot of max HP. So Nord will give us a max stamina bonus, a max hit point bonus, and it will give us that 6% reduced uh, damage that we take as well. So, Nord is going to give us the best tank option, I think, by far for this build. And the max HP isn't wasted at all because we need the max HP for this spec. Um, Dark Elf would give us more max magic and max stamina to work with. However, we give up that max HP and we give up the tankiness. So, yeah. Honestly, on this build, I want to say Nord is actually BIS for this hybrid, which is pretty freaking sweet. So, let's move on to the stats. As you can see here, 22k magicka, 22k stam, and 31k max hit points. That is our max stat right here. So the max magic and max stamina pools are a little bit on the low side. 22k of each pool is not bad. Because we're running meditate, this is going to work really well for the build. The max health here at 31k, really important that we have that 30k or so HP on this build. Now, this uh, max health here is with the Emperorship Alliance bonus. Now, what I do want to mention is that Warden does actually get the green balance passive. That's give them, that gives them the 10% bonus to their health when they heal themselves. So we're normally sitting around 31k when we have the uh, mi minor toughness buff up. Now when that buff is not up, we usually sit around 29k on this build. Um, so that's a little bit of a discrepancy there, but uh, not a huge difference. Having the Emperorship Alliance bonus gets to actually show you what the max health would look like if we were in a combat situation. So it's about 31k. Uh, with the minor toughness and without the bonus. But anyway, taking a look at the regen, we've got 800 magicka and 800 stamina, 390 health recovery. Very low recoveries. This is a meditate build, and we are on a warden. A warden gets a huge amount of resource back just from fighting and healing itself. Yeah, we don't need more sustain than this. In perfect honesty, the sustain on this build is actually really good, and uh, this is quite a lot of recovery for it. Taking a look at our weapon and spell damage, this is what you guys came here for. 3,468 unbuffed. 5,968 weapon spell damage for you guys when we fully buff on this build. Which is, uh, yeah, pretty sweet, I think, for, uh, for a heavy armor build. 5,968. Now, I did advertise the build as 6k weapon and spell damage, guys. And I apologize that uh, we don't actually have that value. I would have to gold out my jewelry in order to actually hit that 6k value. But yeah, as you guys can see, 6k weapon spell damage is pretty insane, I think, for a heavy armor build. 6k of both weapon and spell damage. Yeah. So we'll see a little bit more how we got those stats as we check out the gear. Let's keep taking a look. Our weapon and spell crit on this build is very low. 
We've got uh, 23k on or 23%, 22%, and this goes up to 27 on the staff bar. Yep, it's very low and it's not going to be very high. Um, we don't crit a lot on this build. Uh, we are in heavy armor, so we don't even run the uh, crit buffs on this build. It's the one buffs that we actually go and we neglect, and it's because our crits are already just kind of so low. You could run the crit buffs if you want, get them from places, or run the skills for them. Totally up to you, but they're not a huge necessity for this spec. Our, uh, our physical and spell resistance on this build, coming in at a whopping almost 25k of both. Nearly 25k physical spell resist, and then we also have 3k crit resist. Very, very nice defensive stats. This is going to make our meditate really strong, and yeah, this is important. These are great defensive stats. Let's look a little bit further down. We are a vampire, and to be honest, vampirism is not really needed for the build, but I would highly recommend that you get vampire for this build. You, you can do it without vampire, and you'll have a bit more health recovery, and it'll still work. But I think Vampirism makes the build better just because Undeath plays really well with uh, that Meditate tank as well. So it's up to you. I'm just a vampire because uh, my Warden already is. We are running the Warrior Mundus. Very important because this will give us more weapon and spell damage thanks to uh, us running Pelinals to swap it over. And then for the food that we're using, guys, we have the uh, Tri-Stat food. Increase all of our stats, the long fin pasty with melon sauce. This is the best food for this build. We need every single stat that this food gives. And yeah, this gives us almost 13k stats in total. Absolutely excellent. Perfect, perfect choice for this build. And then finally, guys, for the potions that we're using on this build, we have got... Uh, these bad boys here restore health every second for 48 seconds So this is great that's gonna play into our healing and our meditate and outside of meditate as well And then that major vitality for that increased healing taken by 30% for almost 16 seconds This bonus stacks with the major mending that we get from the warden when we heal ourselves when we drop below health And yeah, the amount of healing power we have in this build is absolutely insane When we have the major mending the major vitality and 6k weapon spell damage Yep, crazy amounts of healing. We can meditate tank like nuts. We can outside of meditate tank like nuts. We just have a lot of healing power on this build, and these potions are going to play into that. So for the sets that we're running, how we get this thing all together, the first set that we have here is Molag Kenna, and we're actually running the two-piece Molag Kenna on this build. Now, I haven't run the two-piece Kenna in the past on hybrids, and this was the first time that... Uh, that I think I've done an, uh, a build on live where I release it with Molag Kenna. And I've stayed away from the hybrid Molag Kenna simply because of the increased cost. But after trying it on the heavy armor build where we don't really care too much for the sustain. Because we're going meditate anyway. I didn't care too much about the cost. So I was like what the heck. Let's just go for Kenna on it. And it works really well. We have huge AoE burst on the warden with deep fissure etc. And Chaining this together with a good Molag Kenna timing means that we can hit super, super hard on a very, very tanky hybrid build. And yeah, this is a really great build. And not only that, but if we're playing defensively, this will also make our heals better. If you want the stronger heals at the increased cost, is it worth it? I don't really know, but uh, it is nice too. You get those big burst heals as well. The next set that we have is Pelinals. This is going to give us max health, both recoveries, and turn our weapon damage into spell damage. That is essentially what we do. We stack the weapon damage as high as we can on this build, and then translate it over into spell damage. And uh, Pelinals is a must-have set, and we're wearing it in the gear here. And then the next set that we have, and uh, this is another really cool set that I wanted to use on a hybrid build, but I never did because I was always playing the medium armor hybrid is the Seventh Legion. Seventh Legion is a great set if you're going to take a lot of damage. It's a great set if you're going to have to have some strong defensive play. And here we, ha here we have it. We've got the weapon damage, health recovery, weapon crit. And then when we take damage, we have that 10% chance to gain almost 500 weapon damage. And we get a little bit of a heal. And this is on a two-second cooldown. So this is going to pair nicely with, uh, with our build for a few reasons. Number one, we spend a lot of time on our Frost Staff Bar. So uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on this bar in our meditate. We're going to spend a lot of time blocking on this bar. And we're going to spend a lot of time healing on this bar. Um, so that means that we're going to spend a lot of defensive time on the frost staff. So we're going to get a great uptime on this thing when we're taking a lot of damage. Um, when, you're in a, when you're in a really hefty fight on this build, your 7th Legion uptime is very, very good. Uh, so there you go. Number two, it gives a little bit of extra healing. Now, it's not a massive amount of healing that it gives, but we are stacking a huge amount of healing over time. And heck, that's another 600 or so healing over time that we can throw on there, you know? So 
it, it, it is something to add. It's not nothing, so it gives a little bit of extra healing, the equivalent of, like, kind of a weaker rally heal over time. So there you go. And, yeah, running this on the Frost Staff on the Hybrid is an absolute great mix. I, I have really been loving it on the Warden. It's a really good combo. And then, finally, guys, the last set that we're running is a Shacklebreaker Greatsword, and we have that by itself on our front bar, and that's just for the weapon damage, which, of course, gets translated over into the spell damage uh, thanks to Pelinals. And, uh, yeah, so taking a look at the traits, this is a Nernhone Greatsword. Our front bar, of course, needs to be Nernhone because we want to stack that damage as high as possible. And then we have Oblivion Damage as the enchant. I think Oblivion Damage is your best bet here simply because we don't have a high crit rate. So Oblivion cannot crit, just has that flat base damage it does. So I think it's the best bet for PvP simply because of that. Now, on the Frost Staff, we are running heavy blocking on the Frost Staff, but we still go for the Infused Staff, so we have extra damage coming out of that poke. It'll give us bonus to the healing power, etc., and we already have so much block reduction. We don't need to run a Defending Staff to be more tanky or anything. I think Infused is the best bet here. Um, and, of course, it's just a great play because we have that double poke with the Frost Staff to proc Kenna, and the Infused is going to proc during that double poke, too. So, uh, there you go. Definitely go Infused for the Frost Staff. Um, with that weapon spell damage enchant, so we get that big buff to our weapon and spell damage. For the rings and necklaces, they are all infused with weapon damage. That is the hybrid staple here. We're going to turn that weapon damage into spell damage, so this turns these into just fantastic little hybrid, uh, hybrid traits. Um, and then for the gear, guys, we have gone with 100% impenetrable with 100% tri-stat hacky joe glyphs. Yup. We're in heavy armor, and we're playing a hybrid. We need full tri-stat, we need full impen. We do some dodge rolling, and we do some blocking, but impen is by far the trait that we need the most of because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff like meditate tanking as well. Impen, B-I-S for this build. So you definitely want to run 7 out of 7 impen. And that is that is the gear, guys. That is seriously it. Um, let's take a look at the skills that we're using for the build. So let's start on our greatsword bar, which is our primary burst bar, and this is where all our big heavy hitting skills are going to be. Um, so the tooltips, like I said, we, we do a few things that buff up our build in this, uh, spec. So the tooltips on these abilities are going to look a lot lower than they will actually be. Um, so yeah, let's just start. So to start off, we have reverse slice. This is going to be our primary execute. Um, and this is here because it's also not only a great single target execute, but a fantastic splash execute as well. It pairs really well with all the AoE that Warden has and all the AoE that we have on this build. Um, so yeah, Reverse Slice, absolutely fantastic. The next skill that we have is Critical Rush, and I slotted this as a primary gap, gap closer, as well as that 100% crit, because we have such a low crit rate, this can ensure that this, that this ability will deal quite a bit of damage. Now, our fully buffed tooltip on this guy, if we get the, uh, the Kenna proc, as well as uh, the enchant and everything, um, and the 7th Legion, we actually get up to 8.4k crit rush tooltip on this build. So we get a massive tooltip on the Heavy Armor Warden with our Crit Rush, so we can deal huge burst. Now, you have options if you don't want to run Crit Rush here. This is kind of your open skill. You don't really need the Gap Closer. I just prefer to run a Gap Closer over any of the other Greatsword skills, in my opinion. Um, but that's just my preference. You can go for the Cleave ability um, and either morph here. The Minor Heroism would be good, and the Damage Shield, of course, would be good too uh, for your survivability. So... Yep, Cleave is a great option too, and you can also go for Uppercut if you want to add a stun to this build outside of our ultimate. We rely on the ultimate for the stuns on this spec, so if you want to have that stun, you can go for Uppercut. I personally don't like Uppercut because you miss it a lot of the time against more experienced players, um, so that's why I choose not to use it and just wait for that big stun if we need to take down the uh, more experienced player anyway. But there you go. The next skill that we have is Bird of Prey. This is very important. That minor Berserk buff is going to give us an 8% damage increase to both our Magicka and Stamina. Very important for the hybrid build. And then finally, we get that Major Expedition, which is also important because that's our only access to the Major Expedition on this build. So it's going to help keep us mobile. Now, we do get the Stamina Recovery bonus from this ability, um, but it's mostly negligible because it doesn't give us a massive amount. I think it's about 100 extra recovery. And we don't play huge on the recovery game anyway. The next skill that we have is Rally, and Rally is going to be your primary um, stamina heal, I guess, because we are a hybrid, so we have a Magicka and a stamina heal on this build. 
Um, so Rally is your stamina heal, I guess. It's going to be a good heal over time. Access to that Major Brutality, which is going to give you that uh, big bonus to your weapon and spell damage. And you also get that Burst Heal after you reactivate Rally. So you can get a really huge Burst Heal on this build. If you have all your healing bonuses up and you're low HP and you pop Rally, it is almost like a full health heal on this 30k HP spec. I think I've gotten 20k plus crits with my uh with my rally heal maybe even 20k plus non crits with rally like i get massive rallies on this build and yeah this build has a lot of healing power i i'll say that again and again because it really does and rally is going to be part of that the next ability that we have is subterranean assault and this is going to be um kind of our burst combo skill this is going to be here to set our burst massive amounts of aoe damage it's going to be poison damage which has a chance to put the poison status effect on the opponent which is dope not a very high chance though because it's an aoe um but finally it also reduces their physical and uh their physical resist by 5200 so this is going to allow the rest of your great sword kit to hit harder and allow you to have a bit more burst with it so there you go really great ability for bursting on the uh, warden i think we get up to a 17 or 18k tooltip on this bad boy for this build uh, and yeah, you just put it on top of your other abilities and you burst really hard. We are running the Frost Staff with Blockade of Frost. And using the Blockade, we can trap people really easily and line up really powerful subterranean assaults into crit rushes and stuff on them. So we can do a lot of damage uh, using that combo of attacks on this build. And then finally, for the ultimate, we have Flawless Dawnbreaker. You could put uh, the Dawnbreaker of Smiting here if you want to have that for the burst. However, we are using Permafrost as our primary ultimate on the build. So I have Flawless of Dawnbreaker uh, slotted simply because of that massive weapon damage bonus. We get 5% from slotting this skill and another 3% because it's a Fighter's Guild skill. 8% bonus to our weapon damage on the Great Sword bar. It's going to give us more burst and more healing on this bar. So yeah, there you go. You could go for the smiting if you want. It's kind of up to you guys. But because we stay mostly in the permafrost, I would say go for the flawless. It's the better bet for this build. Let's take a look at that great or at that uh, ice staff bar. So the first ability we have is blockade of frost, and yeah. This is a great ability. I used it on the Frost Mage. It was fantastic. It's so good in PvP. That 60% snare is so fantastic. It deals a great amount of damage every second. When we fully buff, this gets well over 2.2k. So we deal good damage every second with it. But that snare is so important. And then on top of it, we have a chance to chill opponents because it's an ice attack and if a chilled opponent steps in the field they can get immobilized for four seconds we are a warden and we have a ice staff out so on our ice staff bar we have a bonus to applying the chilled of a hundred percent here and then finally as a warden we have a 200 percent bonus chance to apply chilled as well so there you go you definitely you definitely can take really good advantage of Blockade of Frost on the Warden, and the Hybrid Warden makes really good use of it because it allows us to set up and line up these huge Greatsword combos that are often hard to hit on a pure stamina Warden because you don't have the control uh, with something like the Blockade of Frost. So there you go. Really great, uh, really great kind of set and control damage ability. And then finally, the last thing I want to mention is because we are playing a tank build. When you chill an opponent, with either this ability and they become immobilized in it or whatever but when they're chilled they deal less damage to you so throwing down this blockade and standing in it means that you could potentially reduce the amount of damage you take as well so it's a great tank utility on top of uh, all the other great things it offers to the build the next skill that we have is meditate and you guys know why this is here this is our primary ability for the build that we pretty much built this hybrid around it's a meditate hybrid build this is why we have sustain and you're gonna need to pop meditate every now and then on this build in order to keep on keeping you can of course swing a lot of heavy attacks instead of going for the meditate but at the end of the day the meditate is gonna be uh, the best resource return that you can get on the spec um, the great sword heavies are pretty good though but there you go. Meditate is super great. You channel this ability, it heals you, it returns your resources, and people can bash you to interrupt it. If they bash you, you have to wait two seconds before you can reactivate it. However, if you have CC immunity and you use this skill, people cannot bash you out of it. They have to wait until your immunity is gone. So you can tank really hard after you break a stun with your Meditate if you time it right. Now something that I need to tell you guys about Meditate is that you need to run the Living Trellis. This ability needs to be active while you're in the Meditate. We're a vampire, so we can't just rely on like health regen or just the Meditate healing alone to be enough. Having the heal over time from things like Rally and then the Living Trellis plus the Meditate 
and then the potion on top of it, that's what's going to keep us alive and give us that huge tank ability in our Meditate. So you got to make sure you have your Living Trellis up when you go for the Meditate on this build. Um, and then finally for Meditate, guys, the morph that you want to take of this ability is the one that returns more resource, I think. You could go for the more healing morph, but the more resource return means you have to spend less time in Meditate. You can spend more time fighting, so I think it is the better option. Um, so let's move on. Um, and this build doesn't really struggle with healing power either, I guess. Anyway, so like I had mentioned, the next skill we have is Living Trellis, and this is a very, very, very good heal for this build. Um, Living Trellis is Magicka Warden's best heal, and we've taken it and mixed it with now Heavy Armor Hybrid Warden. So we have the good Stam heal from Rally, and then the Living Trellis, and then Meditate on top of it. So we have tons of healing power on this build. Now, our Living Trellis tooltip looks pretty low here, but we're going to buff up, and we'll show you guys what it looks like fully buffed on our Great Sword Bar and it gets pretty, pretty sweet. Um, well, not fully buffed, maybe, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys an idea of how much healing power this does. So just buffed like this, we get up to the 2k tooltip on our Living Trellis. So if we had our Kenna buff, etc., and the Infused, um, and the uh, and the uh, the Seventh Legion buff, we would be sitting around a 2,600 Living Trellis tooltip every second when we take damage. Um, on this build now if we take that base tooltip and we add 55% bonus to it which we get um, By getting the major mending and as well as we get the major vitality from our potions 55% bonus healing on that puts us around a 4k every second healing from living trellis Yeah, and of course it can crit <sighs> I don't even know what to say and then the burst heal at that point is gonna be like 10k plus So you, you get a really powerful burst heal from it and then it's 2,600 Magicka, and it's a green balance skill, so it returns massive amount of resource as you keep it up. On this build, you keep Living Trellis up 100% of the time, and you will almost never die to, like, anything by itself. Like, no single player is going to be able to really kill you. Um, you have so much healing power with just this ability alone, and then you mix in all the other healing and meditate, and you become incredibly tanky. So, yeah. This, this ability is is one of the cornerstones of why the Meditate is so strong on this build and why it works so well for this Hybrid Warden. So there you go. Really fantastic ability. Great for resource return. Warden's just OP, guys. Everything about Warden is just OP. Let's move on to the next skill, and it is yet again another super OP skill. We have Blue Betty. This is going to return Magicka to us, so give us a little bit of Magicka sustain. It gives us major sorcery, but that is negligible. We don't care about that. The important thing that we get is that one negative effect removal when we use it. It is a 100% free skill to, to use, and we can remove negative effects with it. So this is really great if we need to have some condition uh, some condition management. Like, let's say we got Defiles or or uh, or an Eclipse or, you know, just a bunch of dots, etc. This mixed with the Living Trellis and, of course, the Rally. It heals over time from our potion, makes us very, very resistant to a lot of damage over time. And then, of course, we have Meditate. If all goes to shit, we can try to out-meditate it, too. At the end of the day, though, guys, it might just be a bit too much, but there you go. We have a very strong anti-condition counter, very strong anti-damage over time counter, and we can purge the defiles, etc. Blue Betty's also really nice for that mag sustain, just to give us a little bit more mag. We have primarily Magicka-based skills on this build, so uh, having the mag sustain is nice, too. And then finally, we are running a Frost Staff, too, and this will give us resource back while we use the Frost Staff, as well as the Living Trellis will give us resource back while we block with the Frost Staff. So we can actually sustain a pretty good block between these two skills with the Frost Staff. So the next ability we have is Ice Fortress, and this is our just defensive skill. It's going to give us both our physical and spell resist, as well as that minor protection for 8% reduced incoming damage. Very important for this build, again, to just bulk us up, make us harder to kill, and make our uh, healing over time even better because we're just tankier. Now, taking a look at the ultimate, guys, we have gone with Permafrost. You guys know why we picked Permafrost. It is the best one of the best ultimates in the game. It is one of Warden's best ultimates. So powerful. We deal a massive amount of frost damage with it, so it can apply the chill too, which is super great. Um, it'll give us major protection, making us very hard to kill while we're in it. And then finally, as we damage enemies with it, if we hit them three times in a row, they will be stunned by the permafrost. This allows us to set massive combos on this build. Because this build requires a bit of setting, we, we just kind of tank defensively, double poke with our Kenna into permafrost. And we drop all our abilities, make sure we have the subterranean up, make sure we're buffed. 
and we can drop massive, massive, massive burst. You can bomb. You can actually use this heavy armor tank hybrid build and bomb the side of a group and kill stuff. That's, that's how much damage we can do with this. So there you go. Fantastic ultimate. Don't go for the winter storm here. We're not stacking the max stat too much. Permafrost is here because we stack the weapon spell damage on the front bar. So it's unimportant. Permafrost. B-I-S. Guys, such a great ultimate for this build. So finally, let's take a look at those champion points. Starting in the tower tree. 43 or 34 Warlord, 29 Sprint, and 12 Bashing Focus. A lot of points here because we don't have a huge amount of points in our Lover Tree. Only 75 in Tenacity. We don't have any of the recoveries that we focus on. We want to have that good resource return on our heavies. We are wearing Heavy Armor too, which gives us more resource return with the heavy attacks. So yeah, just a huge dump in Tenacity here and everything else was neglected. No Wind Running. We're very slow. Um, and then in the Shadow Tree, we got 56 Shadow Ward, 44 Tumbling. Focus here on the Shadow Ward because we will be blocking more than dodge rolling, but we will be doing rolling with this build a lot as well. So there you go, guys. Moving on to the uh, Apprentice Tree, we've got 37 Elemental Expert and 18 in Spell Erosion. So big focus on just increasing the bulk damage that we do and then a little bit in the penetration. Um, just because it's PvP, the bulk damage is going to affect most targets more than the penetration would. Uh, the important passive we get here is that Spell Precision, just 12% Spell Crit. It's not a huge amount, but it's something. In the Atronach Tree, we've got 81 Master at Arms, 25 Physical, and 14 Staff Expert. Master at Arms is going to affect our direct damage, which is a lot of the attacks that we have, both magical and physical. So this is a great uh, point thing to put into uh, if you're playing a hybrid build. Physical Weapon Expert, we focus more than the Staff Expert simply because on our Greatsword Bar, we want to have that bigger burst. Our Greatsword Bar also has um, more AoE potential than the Staff Bar does because the uh, light and heavy attacks splash, so we wanted to focus on that. But we don't neglect the staff too much, because the staff can still do quite a bit of damage. We are a warden. We do get that cold damage bonus, so a few points in there. Important uh, passive we get here is Tactician. Roll dodge to set an opponent off balance. We won't be doing this a lot, but when we do, it can turn into some pretty nasty burst for us if we time it right. And then finally, in the Ritual Tree, we've got 43 Mighty, 22 Piercing, to sort of mirror our... Uh, our apprentice tree here a little bit more in this tree for good reason um, and then finally we have 10 in Thaum and the reason we put a few more points in this tree is so we could get that exploiter passive for that 10% bonus damage against that off-balance opponent and there you go moving on to the next tree the steed 54 in resistant 56 ironclad um, resistant of course to give us that crit resist very important to have 3k at least on this build ironclad is going to be great to reduce incoming direct damage most burst abilities are direct damage so this is one of the best defensive things to put points into uh, for pvp and then spell shield just to bulk up our spell resist very nice 26 thick skin 23 hardy 23 elemental defender not as many in the elemental and hardy as we did in thick skin thick skin of course being the focus because we're going to be, be soaking up a lot of damage and our condition counter doesn't necessarily involve removing it all quickly it involves kind of just out healing it and having better healing power as the dots tick on us thanks to the leeching vines so we want to have some points in thick skin for this build for sure and then in the lord tree we got 27 quick recovery 21 heavy armor focus so a nice kind of equal split here with the focus on the crit resist and the incoming direct damage but everything else got a nice equal split bulking up that uh bulking up that physical resist bulking up that incoming healing that we get as well and there you go guys that is the build all right guys so let's do a bit of pvp commentary so to start off here we're going to showcase a little bit of a tank clip, and I think there's a little bit of nice burst in this clip too. So as you can see here, we are deep behind enemy lines on the yellow faction here, and uh, yeah, we're going to show them what we can do. So like I said, guys, a big part of this build is that we've kind of got the control of the Frost Mage, the damage of the, uh, the, damage of the uh, Stamina 2H Warden, and then of course we are on the Hybrid too, uh, so we get the big heals from both. So there you can see, we set down the Frost Field, go for the Permafrost, get a really nice snare there. There's the big subterranean assault and the splash on the Executioner. We actually managed to bring uh, one of the Sorks down up on the top there. Huge burst on that guy, and then right back to tanking it. As soon as our resources start to get low, we're just going to make sure to set down our Frost Field, make sure we got our Vines up, and then just go right into uh, our Meditate there, and the resources shoot right back up. 
So something I do want to mention about this build is that during the course of filming this, I did not get Meditate morphed. Now, if you morph Meditate, it returns a lot more resource than, uh, than the uh, first morph does when you take the resource enhancing morph. And a big part of that on the hybrid build too is that it returns both resources at an increased amount. And the hybrid can really take advantage of uh, both pools like that. As you can see here, when we start to get low on our Magicka pool, we're just gonna switch to rolling and uh, stuff to use our stamp pool for survival and use the heals off the stamp pool. Or we just go right into the Medicate, no shits given. These guys really can't damage it. Here you get to really see that Medicate, Meditate tank the chill is helping big time. We go into the ultimate again. Big stun off on these guys. I try to go for the double poke off the staff here to get the Mola Kenna proc, but unfortunately there's a bit of lag on the server and I don't land a single light attack after I go for the ultimate there into the double poke. So I just turn around and start hammering with my greatsword, but unfortunately we're not able to bring anybody down there. And we just go right back to our tanking here. Make sure we throw down that, fos that frost field and then go right back into meditate. The frost field, again, important to keep that chilled buff up. And here you can see we're keeping our defensive buffs up. We have our vines up. We have our, uh, we have our armor buff up, etc. And we're making sure to stay very healthy. Don't let our health drop too low. A big part of tanking on this build is that you have to heal away really fast. And here you see we take a massive amount of damage. Multiple back-to-back -back Valken Scoria procs plus the soul assault. Very unlucky. But playing the tank on this build, you want to try to keep your HP high and constantly regening it to full. Um, just so people can't get you in execute range. Makes you harder and harder to kill. We are Vampire with Undeath though, so it does help. Let's jump into the next fight here. As you can see, we run in there, we put our buffs up, throw the ice field down to make sure that if people want to chase us up here, they're going to have to run through the ice field and of course take the chill as well so they deal less damage. And then uh, we go up the stairs a little bit more, throw another ice field down, but as you can see, they end up following another EP player. We go for a big combo here, heavy attack, crit rush into the uh, Dawnbreaker. Big damage on that guy. Normally, we wouldn't use the Dawnbreaker very often on this build, but in that particular fight there, you saw we had the opportunity to go for the burst, and we did, but we just didn't manage to capitalize. And then we fight these guys here. We keep the Frost Field on the door. This is great for the Snare and the Chill, helping us stay alive, helping us just buy more time for the Meditate. Here you see we take a little bit of a laggy stun uh, from this guy's... Uh, from this guy's vampire drain, but that's all right. We just work our way back up to the top here, drop around the corner, and then we're gonna go right back to meditating to get those resources back. And yeah, lots of meditation on this build. This is the, uh, the meditate style. And as you can see here, we're back up to full resource and we're just going to, I think, drop a bit of a combo on one of the players here. There you see we get the crit rush into the subterranean. We poked with the Kenna for the Kenna buff, follow it with the Dawnbreaker. Massive, massive damage, almost fully buff damage on that guy. And we just about go down. We're caught with low stamina. Oh my lord, if we had the right Meditate Morph, we probably wouldn't have been caught with our Stam too low there. But we managed to survive it just barely, switch to the Frost Staff, do a lot of block holding with the Frost Staff to get out of that. It's very important that you do the, the block holding on the Frost Staff. I think when you're very low on Stam, you can protect your Stam pool and you can really defend yourself well with the block. Um, so the Frost Staff is a great utility all around. Take a little bit of a weird jump, almost fall off the edge there, and we're just going to re-engage with these guys. Throw that Frost Field down to keep them kind of uh, immobilized. And there you see me just willy-nilly dumping Dawnbreakers right now. We don't really need the Frost Alt for tanking, so I'm not going to be dumping uh, a lot of Frost Alts. Um, but when we fight more players, you will see the frost, out come up, frost Alt come out a lot more. We quickly come up top here, put some damage into this guy and kill him. I jump off the edge here, not noticing how many AD are actually coming through the door, which was maybe not the best place to go for the jump. But I jump into the Meditate, so we do get a bit of healing power. But unfortunately, every single AD player jumps on top of me and I end up dying here. Um, and then the other EP continue to fight the AD here. And I actually pick up a res, just a little bit of AFK here. He reses me twice. Oh my lord, thank you so much, man. And we pick up the res at the last second on his second res on me. This guy really needs the help, he's saying. And I was just AFK, being no help at all. So now we're back. We just go upstairs here. We're going to go into that meditate, and they're going to be coming. We throw the frost field down for that snare. The snare is so great. Here you see the fact that we're going to have him with his stamina warden burst kit, me with my hybrid warden burst kit, emulating the stamina warden, and uh, we're going to be able to put some serious damage into these guys and make sure to keep that frost staff down. It's going to be important for both of us. The chilled is going to help him stay alive too, so the group utility of that snare is really good. Not only are we going to hold them still, but the group utility will save both of us. Here you see I get a great interrupt off on this Templar. 
big damage into her and then the other ep player comes in with an execute to finish her off and i just throw the field down go back into a bit of meditate roll out of the immobilize we're going to refresh the nope we refresh the field in just a sec there it is and a little bit of meditate we are running low on resource here so what we do is we go into the ultimate as they charge and we meditate inside of our ultimate just for a little bit to get a bit of healing and you see that the ultimate does a ton of damage these guys take a lot of damage the other player drops a huge combo as well and we managed to bring a couple down and we're just going to keep doing our part here this other player here is doing a great job staying mobile weaving around doing damage and we are just holding these guys on the staircase they're having a really tough time using this staircase because of how much snare we're putting down on it and there you just really get to see that awesome synergy between the burst on the greatsword and the snare with the staff very very nice unfortunately it's a bit too much pressure for this other player here he's uh, quite a bit squishier than me and he gets nuked and ends up going down we drop off of the edge here into a meditate just to uh, get a bit of health back get a bit of resource back then we go right back into our abilities here we're going to come back up the top set that field down yet again um, and the thing is, is once we set the field down, you see we loop through it, and then we come back over it. This means that anyone following us had to walk through the field twice in order to get through to us, which is perfect, so we utilize that field better. Go into our ultimate here, good, uh, decent damage into these guys, but they've got a lot of healing power, so we're not really putting a dent on anyone, and uh, it didn't really work out so well. We go for the meditate here, and yet again, guys, we are caught 4.3k stam, you see, for the stun break there. Caught just a little bit at the end, low on stam. If we had had the better meditate morph yet again, we would have kept this fight going. So there you guys see it. The sustain is great, even though we have the bad morph. So let's move on to the next clip. And this guy here is going to be a bit of a, a tank test. We're going to show you guys a little bit more of how tanky this build can be. If you guys haven't noticed already that this is a fairly tanky build, it's very tanky. And we're going to have another bit of a clip here where we get to show off that tankiness and just show how durable we can be, how great we can be in these larger scale fights, really be a nuisance um, to the other players. So as you see, we jump on this gap here with our ultimate, put some decent damage into them, but there's a lot of healing getting thrown down by the AD here, so we're not really going to kill anything. But a nice little push there just to hold and grab attention. Once we're low on resources, we hold the block on the Frost Staff bar as we drop off the edge there. Make sure to use that Magicka bar when you're low on Stam, guys, to protect that Stamina bar. Um, the Stamina bar is probably the more important one so if you can waste some magicka to save the stam i would go for it if we can but on this build we have so much passive healing power that even getting caught with your stam down is not a huge deal especially if you get caught in like a meditate bash with your stam down because you just get out of the bash right away anyway and you don't even have to break it so you can be smart with your stam pool even if it's empty and uh, take a good cc immunity from it if you're smart but there you go you see we just drop down go for a meditate get our resource back and we're just going to reset all our buffs here a um, little heavy attack there, but we're going to reset our buffs and reset our combo, and we're going to hit these guys again, I believe. Um, here a guy goes for the soul assault. We just go into meditate. We don't even have the vines up. Literally no damage to us with his soul assault, and uh, we didn't even have our healing on. We didn't even have our healing on. So, yeah, we're pretty tanky. So here you go. We reset all the buffs. We're going to go for um, the subterranean assault. Set down, of course, our... Uh, our uh, field there we're back in our ultimate as well we go for big damage on this guy with the subterranean assault you see we actually managed to kill him but he's running the phoenix set we just jumped in a group on the hybrid warden we jumped in a group of 20 players actually killed something and the one player that we managed to kill is running the phoenix set so he doesn't die oh my god nice little bomb there though there you get to really see again we're so tanky just for that moment just to take that amount of heat from the zerg and put some pressure into them at the same time is really awesome and uh, yeah this guy here jumps down we're not even concerned about him he's not going to hurt us at all we set our fields down we're just going to go right back up to the top here and just play around in this corner taking as much fire as we can now we see some other ep come we drop the dawn breaker on these guys go for a nice little execute on somebody there finish someone off who would hit with the dawn breaker and uh, these ad begin to scatter and uh yeah i think i want to point out in this fight like what kind of made it good is the fact that we could just distract so many players there keep them from other areas of the fight as you can see ep's pushing all over this hill here so if we're in this situation like this where we've got 20 players in front of us and they're all focusing on us instead of the other ep players and we're not going down that is absolutely perfect 
Um, it's less than 20 now, though. It's about 10 or 15 left here. And, uh, yeah, there's another EP player that came up here. He ends up getting slugged down by these guys. We got another Dawnbreaker. We drop, uh, oh, we don't drop the Dawnbreaker. We try to, but as you can see, Zenimax denies us the Dawnbreaker drop twice in a row and then takes our ultimate away without actually dealing any damage, which is super awesome. So we just go right back into Meditate. Try to sit at the front here. Just make sure that we soak up a bit of damage and keep those Frost Fields down. There you go. There you see we instantly get the Immobilize off on that guy there. We get really good Immobilize off on this build. It's very, very very high chill uptime thanks to just being a warden warden frost staff is pretty freaking strong to be perfectly honest and uh yeah as you can see the e the ad players that are behind me there they just turn around and run away they aren't even going to turn around and attack because they know how tanky we are and we managed to just continue to put the pressure into these guys and actually clean them up and uh, we push on to the resource later on. So there you go, guys. This is the last clip that we have for you today. And this is yet again showcasing how tanky we can be on this build, how much damage we can do, and the control. That's really what this build is. It's tank damage control. That's what this build is all about. And uh, this last clip here, just bringing it home yet again. So anyway, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed watching this footage. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button, guys, if you haven't already. Um, and then finally, check out my Twitch channel if you guys want to see me play live. We play all these builds live on Twitch before I post them, so you guys can see the live gameplay there. And we are sponsored by What the Fast. They are a VPN for gamers. If you guys get crap pinged to your favorite games, check them out. 100% free to try, and uh, there's no credit card, nothing to sign up. So no, no harm, no foul if it doesn't help you out. So there you go. Anyway, this last fight here, like I said, just a lot of burst here. Um, a lot of control and a lot of tank. As you can see, we've got a lot of DC players here, and they're in an enemy keep. And what we're going to do is actually just sit on top of this keep here with the DC players, tank them out, and force them to fight us here. And they don't, they're not really forced to. Like, they could go elsewhere, but they're getting bombarded with siege. And the fact that they stay in the siege to try to kill me is what gets them all killed here. And as you can see here, they're just all jumping on top of me, putting the damage in. We pick up a nice purge from a Templar there. That being said, I think we would have been okay, though, because uh, our health stays super high once we get back up. There you see a big Dawnbreaker coming down with the Siege. They're taking dots from the Dawnbreaker, dots from the Siege. Good fight to those guys. Yet again, that tank and control just to sit there, tank these guys out. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Peace out, everybody.